Okay, so uh, welcome to Victoria for Culture Youth Group. Uh, I'm Vincent Oduor. I'll be taking you through the process of uh, tilapia fish egg harvesting at uh, Vicinaco. So the first process, we'll go through the practical process as we do it right here. And the first process will be to capture the, all the fish, uh, separate them, males from females. After separating them, we'll capture the females, uh, then uh, harvest eggs from their mouth one by one. Then thereafter, we'll take them to the other end, on the other side, where we'll set the eggs into the incubation jar to incubate for a period of two to a maximum of around uh, five days on the other side. So from there, let's begin as we take you through the process. So the first process will be, uh, we had already drained a bit of uh, this water. So the next stage will be to harvest the fish where we use this harper net. This is what we use inside here to harvest the fish. Yeah. Okay, just stretch it. Okay, now we capture the ones that remain below. Okay, so after we capture all the fish, so we open the inlet to raise the water level. Let's remove the fish to one side. So at this point, uh, we'll start harvesting eggs. But before we do that, we'll separate first of all the males from the females. The males have a distinctive color, you can see them, the red ones. And you can also check uh, how they look like. They have. Uh, uh, what the papilla I can show you like this one this is the male you can see this one very distinctive two openings and you can see the color as well very different yeah and the male one you can see it has two openings this and this only yeah Put them below. <laughs> and the female one, this uh, female now has a, a wider one, you can see this one, totally different from the male one, this and this second one, which is very large and wide like a line across over here you can see this one yeah. now this is more visible now this is another female you can see this is the anus then the other two organs over here or a female to love. Uh, now this one is a female with eggs. Now you can see a female tilapia carries the eggs in its mouth. So like this one has eggs right now which are very mature. Oh, uh, let me transfer them very fast. There's another one over there. So we transfer them by washing. We just hold it and uh, open the gills and wash it gently like that. 
to release the eggs. Once you do that, put it aside. Now that's how we harvest the tilapia eggs. Now this is another, another one. Now they also carry their young ones in their mouth like this one. They've already hatched. You can see the fry in its mouth. So with this one we won't uh, put them together with the eggs on the other side. So we put them separately in another container. Like here you can see we harvest it the same way. Just to wash gently. Yeah, and you can see the fry swimming over there. Yeah, now for broodstock, it's also recommended to use a size of between 150 to around 350 grams. Like these ones, you see these around uh, 150 grams. They are, you can easily hold them in your hands. Now, if you have a bigger size, like uh, 200 grams, I mean, mini, uh, 400 grams and above, they are so big and uh, I'm handling them, it's very difficult. Yeah, and also the productivity also is a little bit lower than the smaller one, the younger one. These are mature eggs. Oh, yes, very mature eggs. So we also harvest them. Just put it in like that. Really. Pump them out. Wash. Yeah. You can see the small ones uh, give a very a lot of eggs as compared to the bigger ones, and they are very easy to handle. These haven't started hatching, but they are ready. This will probably hatch in the ne within the next two days. Mm. Oh, the next stage now is the incubation, where we have the incubation jars that we use to incubate these eggs. This is the incubation jar. Mm -hmm. so normally, this uh, ring usually have this mesh over here. This one is uh, a little bit old. So we just use it as it is. So you set it like this over here. Keep this one in position. Because uh, when the water flows, this one will be lifted up to allow the hatched fry to flow through this point onto the hatching tray. This one, which will be set over here. I'll show you how that's done. So for now, first of all, we we'll clean this incubation uh, jar. Pretty clean, so we're just rinsing it. The water that we'll be using. So now, uh, we pour in the eggs using our funnel. So here, this is where we have our eggs. So we can add uh, them uh, some water. Also to release some uh, waste like that water and from there just pour the eggs in. Gently.
Yes. Now we have all the heads are inside. Insulation gel. Take off the panel. Alright, and now the next stage is the incubation jar. Into the body, open the valve to allow this water to flow out. What we need to achieve, we want these eggs to be moving constantly. So right now we are still filling the jar. Uh, we will take a while, we don't want the egg to flow out as well. So we will be changing the flow rate. Let the air bubbles to come out. You can see the eggs have started moving now. Let all the waste as well flow out. Yeah. So once uh, most uh, all the waste are flown out, now we set uh, the tray. be collecting any uh, the price that uh, will be flowing out for the incubation jet. Let it stay there. So once the eggs hatch, the fry will come out, swim out to the tray. Out from the tray we'll just be collecting them, uh, carry this tray and transfer them to this other side. What we call uh, RAS B, the circulating aquaculture system B for set reversal. It will take a period of uh, 21 days, after which we will be moving them to the other side because if they had an infection for another 21 days before being released to farmer. Yes. Whatever is happening here is the same thing that the uh, tilapia mouth does. It keeps on uh, moving the eggs, aerating them. And, yeah. So it's like kind of a simulation. Simulation of a uh, Lapia's mouth brooding. Now, these are the fry that have already hatched from the incubation uh, section. Now, we carry them with this uh, hatching tray. This we do periodically, maybe uh, or twice a day or once a day, depending on the number that hatches at any particular time that we check. So, it's either early in the, uh, early in the morning and in the evening. So with this one, what we do, we carry them with this tray, just put them inside this tank, already with water, let it sink in slowly, yeah. then uh, we let them uh, swim out of the tray. Just set it like that and leave it. We'll come back later and find them all out of the tray. Then we see and can see how they'll be coming out. So we have extra trays so that when we set this one here for the fry to swim out, we have another one already collecting more, uh, more fry. For us not to stress them so much. So they'll stay here 
uh, until all of them you can see some of them still have the ox sack the yellow the yellow swelling in their stomach you can see them still laying down there so we won't feed them until all of them consume that yolk sack so that one will take about uh, we won't feed them uh, from uh, tomorrow then the day after about two days we we'll start feeding them on the third day on uh, hormone treated feed that we have over there